Hey guys, I'm so glad that you joined me. This is another self-care Sunday and thank you for tuning in or also for watching the replay. And for those of you that are new to me, I'm Dr. Laura Ritchie. I'm a certified women's health and functional nutrition coach and doctor of physical therapy. And we talked a little bit last week in our video about tips and tricks to help support restful sleep. And I have more of those for you today. So we're just gonna continue that discussion on things that can help with your sleep. Because like we've mentioned before, this can be a really challenging area for a lot of people and it affects so many things, including our weight, our blood sugar, our thyroid, our adrenals, how our sex hormones are functioning, all of that, really the whole endocrine system. So sleep is essential for so many things and we're gonna do a couple quick do-it-yourself recipes and tips to help with that. And let me just adjust this a hair so that you guys can see what we're making here. So with this, we are going to make a do-it-yourself recipe and a roller bottle to help with sleep. And I like, you can get these roller bottles just about anywhere, you can order them on Amazon. There's actually, these are really cute that I was just introduced to. It's the Root and Petal. And I'll put a link for you guys too, but they have lots of colored roller bottles. So roller bottles you can get just about anywhere, especially the health food store too. And it's nice to make essential oil blends with your roller bottles because it just helps your oils to really last a long time because we only use a few drops in these. And we use a carrier oil with that. We're gonna use some fractionated coconut oil. And the carrier oil does what it sounds like. It actually carries that oil transdermally through to the skin. So you're gonna get a lot more use with this, with doing something like this. A little life hack for you to open these up. You can actually put the cap on about halfway and pull. And this will help to get that topper off and kind of loosen it up a bit like that. So that's a little tip here. And then what we're gonna do in this recipe is do five drops of each. So we've got frankincense oil. That's gonna be our first one. I love this oil. It's an enhancer oil. So you can add it to anything and it can just help. Three, four, five drops there. And then we're going to do five drops of our cedar wood oil. So this is another great one for sleep as well. Cedar wood actually applied to the big toe can work very well to help with restful sleep. And we'll do five drops here. Two, three, four, five. It's a little bit of a thicker oil as it comes out. And then we're gonna do five drops of juniper berry. This is actually known as the oil of sleep. So last week we talked a little bit about these, but now we're making this blend. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And then we're gonna do five drops of Serenity, which is the calming blend. So we'll do five drops of that one as well. One, two, three, four, five, perfect. And then what we're gonna do is top it off with our fractionated coconut oil. I like coconut oil as a carrier oil because it doesn't stain your clothes, it absorbs pretty quickly, it doesn't have a really strong smell, but you could use other carrier oils as well, like almond oil or olive oil, any kind of natural oil would be fine. But I put mine in a little pump bottle to make it a little bit easier to fill up. So we're just gonna fill this the rest of the way with our fractionated coconut oil. And I just kind of slowly fill that to the top. And then we're going to put the bottle back on the topper here on our roller bottle. And they make these really cool little kind of essential oil keychain tools to make things a little bit easier. And there's a circle, so you can actually just put that over and push down to pop that on. If you don't have one of these, you could just put this on and then twist it until it just pops back on as well to kind of save your hands. But that's our roller bottle for sleep. So we can shake it up a little bit. And then for sleep time, you could just apply this to the bottom of your feet. So you can open it up and just roll it along the bottom of your foot. Another place that's good to roll it along is the bottom of the spine or just along the spine. So the bottom of the feet or along the spine are really great places for this. But as you can see, we didn't use a lot of our oils. We just did five drops of each and put it in this roller bottle and it's gonna last you a very long time. And I like the combination. So you could play a little bit with the combination, but this is just one blend that's worked well for me. But again, these oils, it was frankincense, cedar wood, juniper berry, and serenity. And we did five drops of each in a roller bottle with our fractionated coconut oil. So no time at all, right? Pretty quick with that. So that's our first do-it-yourself recipe 
to help with sleep. And the next recipe that we're gonna do is a honey and salt recipe to help with sleep. So we have a little glass jar here. We have some raw honey, so you wanna get the raw stuff, the stuff that actually looks kinda of thick there will work really well. And then we have some Celtic sea salt that we're gonna use as well for this and throw this all together here. So you can just get a glass jar from craft store or anything that you may have on hand. And what we'll do with this is we're going to add a teaspoon of our Celtic sea salt and five teaspoons of the raw honey that we'll add here. So we're gonna eyeball this a little bit and add some of this honey into our glass jar. And we'll do a little bit more. And this combination of the honey and the Celtic sea salt, and then we're also gonna add a little bit of coconut oil. So I'm putting that in here. Our raw honey. And then let's do a little bit of our Celtic sea salt. We'll do a teaspoon of that. Put that in here. And then a little bit of our fractionated coconut oil. And this is just to give it a little bit of fat. And I kind of eyeball that, maybe about a teaspoon. And we're just gonna mix everything up really well. And I'll show you guys what this looks like as well. So what this does, and this is actually a tip that I learned from my naturopath and craniosacral therapist, Ruth Ann, so thank you for that tip. And it has been really helpful. And you don't need a lot, so we're mixing this up here, if you guys can see that. And then what I like to do to add to this, and this is just my personal preference, is I like to do two drops of wild orange, which is very calming. So I add that. Wild orange is something that can support with restful sleep. So um, maybe like two to five drops, you could kind of play with it to see how strong you like that. It's very calming. I recommend to people if they're having difficulty like falling asleep, you could put a drop or two, uh, actually one drop is plenty under your tongue before you go to sleep. Or if you wake up in the middle of the night, you could do a drop. So as I'm stirring this up, you guys can see that's getting um, pretty thick there. Our honey and a little bit of coconut oil our Celtic sea salt and a little bit of wild orange. And it doesn't take a lot of this, really just a tiny bit, like a fourth of a teaspoon is all you're gonna need. And you just eat this before you go to bed. So you could do that and then brush your teeth. And what this is gonna do is just help to, um, help support your blood sugar. So let me adjust this just a bit. There you go, you guys can see me now. So when we're going to bed, oftentimes like if people are waking up around kind of two to 4 a.m., so to speak, maybe their blood sugar is crashing, maybe they have cortisol issues at night or adrenal issues, and doing just a little bit of the raw honey and the Celtic sea salt and uh, wild orange oil, and then we have the coconut oil to get a little fat in there can help to kind of stabilize your blood sugar levels while you're sleeping so that you're not getting those spikes in the middle of the night that's waking you up. So this is just a little trick to try. And again, it doesn't take a lot. We're talking like a fourth of a teaspoon of this to do, but really quick to kind of whip this up. This is something that I just um, have in a little jar and I keep by my nightstand table. And usually I'm, you know, diffusing the oils about two hours before I go to bed. I have a routine. We talked about that in our self-care Sunday video last week that works well, but I'm also applying the oils. So rolling the oils to the bottom of my feet and the back of my spine, and then doing a little bit of this. So you can play with this and try this and see if this helps you to have a little bit of support there with this. So that's our other do it yourself recipe that we're making. And then one more thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is banana tea. And I'm not sure if this is something that you guys have heard about, but this was a new thing to me as well to support with sleep. Another thing that I learned from my naturopath, Ruth Ann, so thank you for that. Um, but this is a really great and simple recipe to help sleep and it helps a lot of people. So I recommend if you can to get organic bananas because we're gonna use the peel and you'll you know take the stickers off of them, all of that, and you'll cut the tips off with your knife and you'll put the whole thing, including the skin, um, the peel, the whole banana, into a pot of boiling water and you'll boil that skin on for 10 minutes. And then after that's done boiling, you can 
discard the banana. You could save the banana if you want and eat the boiled banana maybe the following day, but we're not gonna use the actual banana in the tea. So just boiling it with that peel on and then discarding that part of the banana. And so now you have the, the tea, the water, and you can pour that into a mug. And I like to do a little bit of cinnamon with that. So cinnamon is very supportive of your blood sugar. So it'd be a great thing to do before bed. Or if you wanted to get even more potent, you could do a drop of cinnamon bark essential oil with that. So cinnamon's very supportive of blood sugar. It can just help make your banana tea smell and taste really, really good as well. But this is really helpful because in the peel of the banana, there's a lot of potassium and magnesium and all of these things are really helpful to work on supporting and relaxing your nervous system and you know maybe even um, muscles and all of that as we want to kind of calm down and transition and get ready for bed and these things are found in the peel and that's why we're boiling the peel with this so it can be really nice to do and you could just try it and see if it works for you but i would recommend you know making it and drinking it about an hour before you go to bed again a lot of these things you want to do a little bit before we don't want to do this like right before we go to bed but transition and wind down for that but these are just nice natural things that you can try that aren't going to be addictive that can really help to support restful sleep because when you're getting good sleep that's when healing can really take place in your body and just so many things just thinking better people feel better it's really where the body rests and repairs so sleep is really essential for so many things so I hope that was really helpful for you guys. Just some other tips to remember when we're talking about sleep. Avoid eating right before you go to bed. It's actually recommended. This is what I'm learning in my nutritional endocrinology program from Dr. Rita Marie Lascalzo, is you don't want to eat right before you go to bed. It can cause lots of issues. Oh, thanks, Mindy. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the, for the hearts and stuff and for joining us live. Um, you really want about three hours of space from dinner to going to bed because if you're eating right before you go to bed that's going to one your body's gonna have to work on digestion instead of working on sleeping and then growth hormone and insulin actually don't like each other and when you eat your blood sugar goes up and insulin rises to kind of take care of that and growth hormone is the fat burning hormone it's the reparative and restorative hormone that we really want that helps us build that lean muscle mass and if insulin is high growth hormone is low and growth hormone is what actually comes out and peaks at night when we're fasting when we don't have anything in our tummies so just an important thing too that you can try and could really help you know again if you're dealing with an adrenal issue and you need some support maybe doing just a little bit of the raw honey and the sea salt before bed could help you with that um, also remember caffeine it can be really challenging for some people. Some people have a genetic mutation to caffeine in that they don't metabolize it and process it really well. I am one of those people. Caffeine makes me super jittery and it's not good. <laughs> so I just avoid it. Again, if you're having burned out adrenals, so symptoms of that you need some adrenal support would be you're tired but wired at night. Morning is the worst time of day for you. It's super hard to wake up. You gotta have your caffeine and your sugar to function and get you going. You have to have a snack on hand every one to two hours or you get hangry, that hungry and angry combination that we wanna avoid. Um, weight gain around the middle, around the belly because we've got issues with cortisol. You catch every cold or flu that comes around because your immune system suppressed. And you could have uh, painful sex. You could have vaginal dryness painful sex or issues with that because your sex hormones are out of balance um, with that. So those can all be symptoms going on with adrenal fatigue that you just kind of want to be aware of. Again, I was shocked to hear on a recent summit that the half-life for caffeine can be eight to 10 hours. So it can take that long just for half of that to get out of your system. So those of us that are really sensitive to caffeine have to be really cautious of that. So maybe not having caffeine after noon. And again, just remembering that chocolate has caffeine too. And if you're really sensitive to that, you might want, want to have it after noon or after 2 p.m. Kind of play with that for your own self, be a little bit of a biohacker and figure out when you need to cut that off to see if that could be contributing to issues with sleep. Another thing that you could try, this is a great suggestion that I learned from my mentor, Dr. Rita Marie Lascalzo with the uh, 
in my nutritional endocrinology studies is doing a three day sleep vacation. So if you can carve out time for three days to sleep, and this can be very, very restorative for your adrenal glands and really can help you feel so, so much better. So what you do is for three days, you uh, don't cook, you don't do errands, you don't work, you don't do anything like that. You set aside time and during the day, there's no stress. You know, I would already maybe make a big batch of some healing soup up for you or whatever that you want to have on hand for meals. And you just watch really fun, relaxing movies. You read books, you just do fun things. And then you go to bed early and you stay in bed for 12 hours, 12 hours. And if you wake up, you um, just stay in bed so you can read, you can work on your deep breathing or your breath work, meditation, prayer, but you stay in bed for 12 hours and same thing, no stress during the day, very relaxing, fun movies, reading books, all of those things. And you do that for three days. And sometimes that can be a game changer for people and it can just help them feel so, so much better. So I challenge you, you know, try one of these. If one of these just intuitively sounded like a good idea for you that you wanted to make the sleep roller bottle blend with the essential oils and apply that to the bottom of your feet or your spine. If you want to try the honey and salt and see how that does doing just a fourth of a teaspoon of that before you go to bed. If you want to try the banana tea that we talked about, you guys can try that as well, or even scheduling a sleep vacation. Try one of those and let me know if you make any of these recipes, please post it on Facebook or social media and tag me on it. I love to see when people are implementing some of these things and let me know how it's working for you and if it's helping. But that's my sleep tips for this self-care Sunday. I hope you guys found it helpful and I hope you guys have a, grass, a great rest of your Sunday evening and, a, um, and enjoy the, it's a holiday weekend. So enjoy that and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.